Hi, this is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com. And today I want to talk about spark latency. This is one of those things that you very seldom see talked about on the internet. And it's amazing how many tunes that people send me that this has never been set. The symptom you get when you have a spark latency problem is your timing changes or floats as you rev the motor and the timing is set to fix timing in the software. The cause is ignition systems have a delay. It turns up with capacitors, inductors, all those sort of things in electronics. There's always some sort of delay. This stuff is not lightning fast like you might think. I'm going to show you some of the math, the boring stuff that gets involved in this. And then I'm going to give you some rules of thumb. Spark latency, you have to note that this must be set before dyno power tuning. If your tune has a zero in this setting, this was most likely never checked and set by your tuner. And never blindingly accept a internet tune as perfect. This is one of the biggest reasons. You can often see six or eight degrees of timing shift because somebody never set this. This is a basic circuit that you have when timing a motor. Here is your crankshaft spinning around. This particular one is drawn with four magnets, for example, but more than likely it's like 36 minus one teeth on the crankshaft, and you have a set of timing marks. Hopefully you have a set for maybe 15 or 30 degrees, and you can lock your timing in the software to the same setting as you get at the crankshaft. You have a crank sensor. This is a hall sensor typically, or possibly a VR sensor. It could have some delay in it. It processes its signal, sends it off to the ECU, where the ECU runs calculations, both hardware and software. There can be some delay in there. Then the signal is sent to the coils, to charge up. Typically you're sending a five volt signal to charge the coils, then release the five volts and off goes the spark to the spark plug and the timing light. You can also see I've got this drawn as a setback type timing light or an adjustable timing light. That is the sort of thing that you really want to avoid when doing base timing. The reason is they also have some delay or latency. This is the same drawing, but now I've added the cam and crank of the motor. And on typical Japanese motors, very commonly, we have a crank sensor up on one of the camshafts. Well, it turns up that all this belt, as it goes around, is using horsepower. It is stretching a little bit. That's why we have this belt tensioner. And this also adds into the total delay. The higher the RPM, the more the delay in this case. So now let's do some of the basic math. A motor turning 750 RPM, that works out to 0 0.080 seconds per revolution of the motor, or 4,500 degrees of crankshaft rotation per second. And if you do the math, you'll end up with 0 0.0045 degrees per microsecond. Now, if we do the exact same math, 3,000 RPM higher, we get 3,750 and 0.016 seconds per rev. And you go through the math and you end up with 0 0.0225 degrees per microsecond. So if we arbitrarily just try the math at 165 microseconds delay, if that's what all this delay adds up to, you can see that your timing would be 0.7 degrees wrong at 750 RPM, but a full 3.7 degrees there at 3750 RPM. So in this particular case, we'd end up with three degrees timing change, given you have 165 microsecond delay. As it turns up, if you have a fixed delay in your ignition, this number would just keep getting bigger. And in the case of 165 microsecond delay, you would have 
about six degrees air at 6,000, 6,500 RPM. So this can get to be a big deal. Here's a rule of thumb. If you have your eye set at say 1,000 and then you rev it up to 4,000, a 3,000 RPM increase, and you look at your crankshaft with your timing light and you see a one degree shift, your timing changed from say 15 degrees to 14 degrees, that would work out to 55 microseconds is the adjustment you need to put in your software. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But if you see, for example, three degrees of timing shift, it would take 165 microseconds correction. If you notice these two on the right, where you get into four and five degrees change in 3000 RPM, more than likely there's something else going on. Like your belt is seriously stretching, or something else mechanically is going wrong in the motor. So be very cautious if you get up into those numbers. So what I'm going to do is show you in a few different software packages where you find this. It comes by all sorts of different names. In the case of a, the Megasquirt world, it's called Spark Hardware Latency. The easiest way to find it is go up here in the search bar and then type in ignition options and it'll bring up this screen. and here it is called spark hardware latency and in this case i've got 55 microseconds put in this is holly's software and if you go to this icon that says efi on it and go to ignition parameters and if you happen to go to custom then you can get to configure here in this yellow box supposedly the rest of them are already set i don't really know and once that once you hit that box you can see inductive delay at 40 microseconds right here in the yellow box exactly the same setting they just call it something slightly different this is link g4 plus another tuning software and there's a search function and if you put in there ignition setup you will then see ignition main and under there ignition main you have ignition delay 50 microseconds this is max ecu and if you go under ignition ignition settings and here it is in the second slot down ignition system delay again it's exactly the same number as everybody else is using this particular motor was set up and found to be 40 microseconds is what it took to get steady timing and Motec M1 Tune, and if you go to All Calibrate, type in Delay, and you'll find Ignition Driver Delay, and there it is, 50 microseconds. Again, that was the setting for this particular motor to get the timing stable. And last, I want to show you the Haltech software. What you do is go to the gear right here, and then come down to the Trigger tab, and you have to turn on TDC offset angle table enable. This one is a little different than the rest of them. Basically what you do is the delay is essentially zero degrees, crankshaft degrees at zero RPM. But for example, if we found at 4,000 RPM, it took a four degree correction to get your timing to stay stable. That's what you'd put in. And by the way, it would continue to rise at that same rate all the way up to the end of your power band. This one is a little more adjustable than most in that you're actually putting in degrees. So in conclusion, the goal is to get the timing at the crank to match the timing as commanded by the ECU. It is best to check timing at the crank with the ECU locked to fix timing you should always avoid using a drop back style timing light cheap tends to be better something in the 40 dollars range they're almost getting difficult to find anymore ignition latency is called lots of different names but can be corrected in most all efi standalone systems i want to point out that if you're using some sort of factory tune type system you may not be able to find this setting and if you go changing your coil packs for example you may have a problem you cannot adjust. Ignition latency can potentially come from several different sources that all add up, such as stretch from your timing belts and ignition. 
When you adjust your ignition latency, you must later reset your base ignition timing. This is important. For the people who want to see this in a little more technical terms, basically what we're looking at is the red teeth or the red trace is the 36 minus one tooth pattern. You can see it here repeating where the blue is your approximately three milliseconds of dwell time that is charging the coils. And right here, for example, if you wanted the spark to actually spark at the back edge of this tooth, this is the latency correction shift you're doing. What you're moving is the dwell left to right to get the timing to actually happen when you want it to. You can also see in this where vertically it is voltage coming from the hall sensor. This particular motor is coming in at about eight and a half volts and down to zero. And you can see your dwell coming in from zero volts running up to about four and a half volts, three milliseconds of dwell time. The dwell drops and slightly later the ignition flies. I want to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com. These are the developers of Mega Log Viewer HD. It's the software I use to tune most of these motors. And should you have the desire to help me stay motivated, uh, you can always donate at paypal.me slash howEFIWorks. And be sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching.